Hi, I'm Justin Taylor, NetIQ's identity and security guru. And obviously a lot of people want to move to the cloud. And people ask a lot of times, why aren't they? Well, the number one reason why they're not is because of security issues. And to help out with that, NetIQ has some rather interesting solutions. And to talk about one particular access, about how to give users access to that using your enterprise technologies, your identity and access management systems. We have our good friend John. How's it going, John? Good. How are you? Good. Well, hey, tell me a little bit about what people need to do in order to get to the cloud. So what we found is IT wants control of uh, services out in the cloud, but business users want the agility. So more often than not, they're going out to the cloud whether or not IT supports them or not. So what we're doing with the NetIQ Cloud Access product is bringing identity and provisioning together in new and exciting ways and making it simple for the administrator to roll out that service to their end users. So it's not a matter of either or, it's a matter of getting both. Exactly. Now, that sounds hard though, so show me what it's like from the end user's perspective. Well, here we have the end user. He's logged into his Windows 7 workstation, logged into his domain, and he hits the landing page for our product. Um, he's prompted for a username and password. Now this so, is his internal username and password, right? So this is his enterprise credentials, what he uses to log in every day to his Active Directory domain. So the difference is that our product doesn't do any password sync. All of your enterprise credentials stay in the enterprise where they belong. So they never leave that security realm where they belong. So we're not sending those out to the cloud. Um, oftentimes when users create their own accounts, they use their enterprise credentials out in the cloud, and that's exposing risk to the enterprise. Yeah, also what happens if they leave the company and now have that account sitting out there. Exactly. So this user logs into our landing page of our product and has single sign-on into Salesforce as a chatter-free user. He can come back to the home page and also has single sign-on into Office 365. So using our product, we've provisioned these accounts out to these SaaS applications and provided a single sign-on experience. And so I'm guessing that a customer and organization could take uh, those components and put it into their existing portals, right? Yes, those are just URLs that the end user hits. So you can put those into your own portal and have the same single sign-on experience through your portal. Okay, great. Now, this all looks great, and I've seen other products do this kind of thing. But, you know, I've always found that it's not what you do, it's how you do it. So maybe you could show me how easy it is to install, because that's usually where our customers start to get a little nervous, is okay. how do they set this thing up? That's one thing that's exciting about this product, is we've tried to make it as simple as possible for the administrator to roll this out as a service to their enterprise customers. So this product is delivered as a VMware appliance. It's an OVF template file that you just deploy out to your ESX or ESXi server. It takes about 10 minutes to boot up. Uh, it configures itself for your environment. So if you're using a DHCP network or if you have a static IP you want for this appliance, it will come up and recognize the topology and configure itself. You have this um, login screen that comes up for the console once the machine is booted up, and you can go and configure the appliance. We have a, a wizard that does that. So here's the initialization wizard for our appliance. You can see it has four steps to get this appliance up and running so that your end users can start using it. So basically you have the choice of setting whether it's a DHCP address or a static address. So in many cases, you might be rolling this from a staging environment to production. So you may need to change the network settings. You have to set up an initial identity source for where your enterprise users exist. So this could be an Active Directory server or an eDirectory server. So I don't have to create another, yet another directory. There's, there's no other directories involved. And as I mentioned, your passwords never leave your Active Directory. You can also have secure connections over LDAP S to that Active Directory. And you can even use a non-privileged user, which we're using here, to manage the accounts in that directory. So to make sure that we don't have yet another security hole by using something like administrator or some other super user. Exactly. And we also don't install any agents or password sync on your Active Directory. We leave that system alone how it is. So there's nothing intrusive on that system as well. No support problems or anything like that for Microsoft. Exactly. So we just walk through this uh, initialization wizard. We set up the public DNS name um, for clustering purposes, things like that. So it, it, it can work in a cluster environment? Yes. So depending on how many logins per second you need, you can add more nodes to, each, to the cluster of this system and gain about 30 logins per second per node. So it's very scalable. 
So let me just log into the administration UI and I'll walk you through how easy it is to add a new service. Let's say my business users want me to roll out Google Apps as a service. Google Apps, I seem to have heard that before. <laughs> So here's the main administration screen of this product. I can see that I have two identity sources set up, an Active Directory and an eDirectory. I have my Office 365 and my Salesforce um, domain set up. I can see that I have a two-node cluster right now. Uh, all my nodes are healthy. If one of these was having trouble, say, uh, with a communication error or a network problem, I would see a warning on this screen. Um, the product has some reporting built into it, but only seven days' worth of data. So let me just walk through and set up a few things that I've read about in the documentation that I want to configure. So let's say I want to forward my event stream off to a Sentinel server or an SLM appliance. I can go ahead and just drag that item over from the palette, click OK, and now all of my events, whether they're login events or provisioning events, will be forwarded onto my Sentinel server where I can run reports and long-term storage. So that brings in some compliance. That seemed a little too easy. Um, you notice when my user logged into the main screen the first time, he was prompted for a username and password. So I want to eliminate that step by configuring integrated Windows authentication. So basically, I've created my key tab file as per the documentation. I upload it through this widget, and it sets up all of my Kerberos authentication. Go ahead and click OK for that. And you'll notice I have a little ticket here that shows me that that Active Directory domain is now supporting Kerberos. So very graphical, very easy to understand. Right. So now for my Google Apps setup, I've gone ahead and I've set up this Google Apps domain. I'm coming through and reading through the documentation on Google Apps. Now this is a standard thing that you would do if you were an organization using Google Apps. Exactly. I've set up a Google Apps for Business, uh, and I want to set up single sign-on. So I come to the Google Apps screen, and I see that I have to set up single sign-on. So I need to enable single sign-on. And then I have some URLs that I'm not really sure what they mean. A sign-on page, a sign-out page. Um, the documentation says that I need a signing certificate. I'm not really sure what that is. Let me show you how we handle that in Cloud Access. So again, from my palette items, I can grab my Google Apps connector, drag it onto the system. Let's go ahead and configure this. Now you'll notice I have a checkbox here that says automatically configure single sign-on settings. That sounds too good to me. I'm going to select that. Click OK. Now I've made some changes, so I'm going to apply those changes to my system. So in that short amount of time, I just added a Sentinel collector that would send my event stream off to Sentinel. I've enabled integrated Windows authentication, and I've configured a Google Apps domain. My system is now configuring this connector and the single sign-on settings for that Google Apps domain. That simple. That simple. You'll also notice I have a pallet item here that has some single sign-on only connectors. Those um, are SAML2 connectors that you can build with the NetIQ Access Connector Toolkit. So any endpoint that supports SAML2 protocol, you can build a connector and import it into this appliance. So in some cases, we have the kind of completed X-Wing fighter thing you buy from Lego. It's everything there. You just, just follow instructions, put it together. In some cases, we can use SAML 2, kind of like a Lego kit, and build anything we want. Exactly. So if you have a custom application that supports SAML 2, you can build a connector and import it and provide single sign-on for your end users. OK, now I can see that my Google Apps connector has gone green, and my appliance is finished configuring the system. So now when I come back over to my Google Apps domain, I'm going to go ahead and hit the Advanced tab again and go to the Setup Single Sign-On. All of the URLs have been filled in for me based on the name of my appliance. Single Sign-On has been enabled, and a new certificate has been uploaded for me. So literally just input a little bit of information, authenticate, and it takes care of the rest for exactly. you. Exactly. We call that the Google Apps Easy button. One click, and it's ready to go. So how does the administrator roll this out to his end users now? So back on the Appliance Administration screen, we have a Roles tab where you can delegate some of the operations to other users. 
So if I wanted to allow someone else to be a Google Apps approval manager, I can just drag them over, drop them into that role, and click OK. And now they can approve workflows if I enable those. So literally just drag and drop, no complex coding or anything required. That's it. On the Policy tab is where I drive my business policy out to the cloud. So you'll notice when we added that Google Apps connector, we now have a Google Apps system that I can map the authorizations from Google Apps over to a group in AD. So if I want to have users get a test account when they're added to the group in AD, I just drag that over to the appropriate group in AD, and then I have the option to require a workflow. I'm going to require an approval because I'm paying for these accounts, so I want something to happen before they get created. So I just check the checkbox and click OK. Now because I'm an appliance admin, I can also see the approvals. So as I come into the approval page, I can see that there's a workflow pending for this user that was already in the group, that a workflow has been created to give them a Google Apps account. I'm going to click OK and approve that. So again, we tried to make it simple. It's approve or deny. So all that without any coding required, right? Exactly. Drag and drop wherever possible. So now that I'm all done, let's go back to my end user and, and revisit his login experience. So here's my end user back on his Windows 7 workstation. He's already logged into the domain. So if we go ahead and open his Internet Explorer back up, you can see now he has a Google Apps trusted provider and he was never prompted for his username and password because of the integrated Windows authentication that we enabled. He clicks on the Google Apps trusted provider. And again, all that with no agents or anything installed on the AD No box. agents, and he's already signed in to Google Apps. Very nice. Looks very simple. Now, you know, a lot of people would say, well, there's other things that can do this. So why is it that someone would want to look at NetIQ's cloud access product? So there are a few things that really differentiate us from other products. Um, other products do do provisioning, uh, but most of them do provisioning with SAML2 just-in-time provisioning. And more often than not, they also provision your enterprise password when they create the account. So actually synchronize that information. Exactly. Over. Again, exposing risk to the enterprise. Um, our product also provides the integrated Windows authentication um, as well as we manage and provision accounts. So once an account has been provisioned out to these SaaS applications, we can manage group membership and user profiles via group membership in your identity store. So what if I use other products though, like Identity Manager or maybe NetIQ's DRA product? Um, is that going to integrate with it? So if, if you're already using those products, if it's DRA or let's say you're just used to using MMC every day to manage groups, our product is all based upon group membership in your identity store. So whatever you use already to manage those groups, you can continue to use that. So you don't need to learn a new product. Sounds great. We also provide zero day start and zero day stop, which is important today as well. Yeah, so it's because I'm removed from the company, I obviously now can't get access to Salesforce. Exactly. Well, it looks like a great product. Again, it goes back to not what you do, it's how you do it that really matters. Well, thank you very much for taking the time today, John, to uh, show us what um, this product's all about. You're welcome. So for all of you watching, make sure you take a look at this video and really think about what you need in order to be successful at deploying security and moving your users out to the cloud. This has been Justin Taylor and John Hardman for NetIQ.